Hi YouTubers, and yes, it's the weekend, and today I'm holding a double bill Sunday special. As last weekend, I didn't have the opportunity to make part seven. Well, this is part seven, and later on today, I'll release part eight, so look out for that as well. Well, it's Sunday, and this is video games and consoles from the loft. <laughs> Well, it's the 8th of November and welcome to this first instalment of the Double Bill Sunday Special. And for part 7 of season 2, I have two items which were imported, rebranded and sold here in the UK by British toy companies. Both are unboxed, unfortunately, but both are excellent tabletop games. And we're going to kick off with this one, Sega's Afterburner tabletop game sold here in the UK by Grandstand. Well, yes, yet another item sold by Grandstand here in the UK. So we need to head back to part two, season two, for the background info. Well, behind the branded name of Grandstand lies the Adam Leisure Group, and they imported many electronic products like this game from around the world, from many different manufacturers, such as Tomy, Entex, and Epoch, and then stuck the branded name of Grandstand on the top. And Grandstand released this item from under the license from Tiger. Tiger, who are from our great friends across the water in America. Founded in 1978, they have created many, many LCD games from tabletop to handheld games and many other toys as well, including the Furbies. And they released this tabletop game based on Sega's Afterburner game from 1987 in 1989. Well, without further ado, let's take a closer look. Well, as you already know, I don't have the box or the instructions, but the game itself is in pretty good shape. And as you can see, they really spent some time on making this game and have really set the scene extremely well. If we look to the battery compartment, you can see inside that you'll need to fit two C batteries and two AA batteries. There's your up and down lever, to move closer to the sea and further away from it and your power button on the right there. You also have an instrument panel to warn you of incoming missiles. If we look to the control stick itself, on the back of it um, you have your machine guns and on the top you have uh, the button to offload your missiles and the control stick only moves left and right. You have a sound button and start button and this is the screen you play the game on and let's look at some gameplay right now. The gameplay is very simple, but extremely good fun. You're flying over the sea, avoiding contact with your enemies, and are trying to blow them out of the air using your missiles, which are very useful. But I prefer to use the machine guns, as they are very effective, and the sound effects are very realistic. As you progress through the game, there are about 18 levels in total to conquer, and lots of intense fighting. And overall, it's an excellent game. Well, compared to all of the tabletop games that I've shown you over the past Sundays, I think you'll agree that this tabletop stands out from the rest and actually represents Afterburner extremely well. From the instrument panels to the flight control stick, to the speed control, to the lights, the sound and the gameplay itself, I would say that Tiger did an excellent job and it's extremely good fun. The only criticism would have to be the screen size of the game itself, but that's just me being picky. Well, from one great tabletop game to another, let's look at this one. And this is Frogger from Konomi, and this was licensed here in the UK to our very own Computer Games Limited, CGL. Well, we have yet another item from CGL, and we need to head back to season one, part five, 
for the CGL Info. Now CGL, otherwise known as the Computer Game Limited Company, are no longer around, but as far as I know, mainly operated during the 1980s, selling many games like this one, and at one console at least, called the Sword M5. Now all these games were imported from other companies, like Tomy and Sword, and then sold by CGL, just like Grandstand used to do from my other episode. And CGL were able to release this tabletop game from under the license from Konomi. Now, Konomi were founded in 1969 as a jukebox repair and rental company and have since moved and had a massive involvement in the video game market, making many tabletop games like this and video games as well for many consoles such as the Famicom, Sega Mega Drive and the PlayStation. And they released Frogger in 1982. So let's take a closer look. Well, I don't own the box or the instructions for this game either, but it's in pretty much near perfect condition. It's got a lovely Frogger label on the back there and looks a very good item too. In the back of the game itself is where you fit the batteries and you'll need to fit four C batteries. It also supports an AC adapter as well, which is extremely handy as always. And underneath is also some instructions as well to let you know how to play the game and a key. Um, and if we turn to the front, it has a very descriptive uh, screen panel and tells you exactly where everything is and what stage you are throughout the game which is really really hand handy and I'll come to that later. If we now look at the control panel, on the bottom left there you have the sound on and off switch. On the bottom right you have your game A and game B and a control stick which moves extremely well and I think it's time for some gameplay. Well, the object of Frogger is to return your frogs back to their dwellings. You start at the grass at the bottom of the screen and you have to work your way up to the top, avoiding the cars and the snakes and timing each jump carefully onto the turtles, logs, more turtles uh, and then onto some more logs and then hopefully landing each of your frogs into the dwellings. Game A has a total of four dwellings to work towards and game B has a total of six and I just think this game is absolutely brilliant. Well, when they created the classic game Frogger into this tabletop version, I must just say that I think they got it absolutely spot on. I mean, the gameplay is excellent. The screen size is perfect. And with this outer edging labeling around the sides, that is extremely helpful. And also with this sunshade to keep out any unwanted sunlight, that is a really nice touch. It also has the great controls and excellent sound effects. And this game is absolutely Brilliant. And if you collect tabletop games like me, or just starting out, then this is a must-have. So to own either of these items that I've shown you, then you're probably looking at about anything from 10 to about £30, or 10 to $40 in America. Well, this is part 7, and later today, part 8 will be released, and you can look forward to that. Well, I'm off to a Sunday roast right now, so I'll see you later. I'll be one of you, I'll be one of you, I'll be one of you.